welcome back. It is an absolute gorgeous morning to farm. No wind, next to no wind. Light wind, never mind, never mind. There's wind, see the flags flapping. But it ain't bad. It's good warm weather. It's gonna be 80 degrees today. And we got corn to pick. So we're getting them ready. I need to grease my gearing hop head. Brody's working on his, his head. Let's see what he's doing. Pumping fuel. Did you wreck something again? No, oh, it's just leaking. Oh. The seal is no more of. You're gonna cock it. So last night we left parts pump full, so we got four semi loads out here. Brian's cleaning the windows on that one. Semi should be here any minute. Eric's gonna spread fertilizer while we service and fuel everything up. Keep that as close to the combines as possible so tillage can roll. It is, uh, should be exciting. More, generous. I'm pushy. <laughs> I want this little tube to run out for the other side. <laughs> Isn't that just an amazing sunrise? So beautiful. All right, we did everything. Fuel, grease, blue cab filters out. We got here at, uh, we left farm at 7.30. It's 8.30 now and we're ready to fire them up. Not too bad. And we're back to ripping stocks. And look at what I got, more dairy-free pizza. Mmm. And it's cold, too. That's good. Got some sriracha to put on it. So, <clears throat> on a gearing half corn head, chopping corn head, I was told to grease this daily. So there's a zerk on each front of the snap roller and the one, one on the back of this chopping gearbox. It's just greasing the bearing that's there, I believe, or... I don't know, I was told to grease it every day, so I'm gonna do that. Come on! First time, so there's these stupid little plastic caps on them. Brody, you're missing a row! Oh, now he's back on. He left the row of shame. You know how I don't like that. But he's kind of screwed because he's in cutting through a strip. Come on, Brad! I'm filling up. Look at, she's bubbling up real good. Gonna be windy couple days here. Not looking forward to it. Makes it hard for uh, the trucks to get tarps on is maybe the major factor. Um, the other thing is a lot of trash actually blows and whirls up into the grain cart. Not a big deal, but it kind of plugs up the pit grates and stuff if you get a lot of that going on. Well, right here to the right is the grove that we took out this summer. The pile's still there. We didn't want to burn it with the crop there because it would have killed the neighbor's crop and some of our own. Uh, this is like a little goat trail getting down here. We're about to enter off-road mode and go down just a dirt grass road here. Look at this. I'm concerned about getting trucks down here because like all grass dirt roads the wheel tracks are lower and then the center of the road ridge is up and I'm scared about our Peterbilt bumpers that are four inches off the ground that it'll get bent straight back so we're evaluating the situation to see if we can get trucks down here otherwise we're gonna have to 
haul it out a mile to the big county road and load on the road, but we will see. This is steep. Steep, steep drop off that way and very narrow here. Glad the neighbor's got his corn harvested here. I know you can't see much more than I can. The west side of this is like a drop off, right? <laughs> Yeah, don't hang your duel over it. So the road used to come in on the left side of that tree. I came down here with the excavator and cleaned up this path here so that our trucks can make more in the corner. <laughs> He's having trouble with his big duels getting through. It's kind of cool back here. It's like a wildlife mecca. First year uh, that we farm this, it's all new experience. All right, we got a full unfold head here. Find the right page, push and hold that. Here it goes. This would have really been a painful field without this. It unfolds a lot faster than it folds up. Come on, little snoot. All right, so Gehringhoff told me when starting up a chopping folding head, well, a folding head in general, to reverse your feeder house when you unfold it before you go forward. You don't have to, but it engages a lot smoother, which I can agree it does. Yeah, you know what time of the year it is when these come out. It's corn drying time. Just look away. I'm hideous. Yeah, okay, we're gonna do a sample of the corn. I always like watching it. Gotta watch it, otherwise it don't work properly. You know how that goes. Okay, we got, we're combining out west of the farm a few miles down the road, and I am trying to set the corn dryers. We've got the new fancy dancy dryer master doing its thing, and um, that seems to be working good. Which, why wouldn't it? It's electronic. It always works, right? Electro electrical stuff never gets trouble. Okay, we got corn coming out of the field. 18% corn, so the dryers are not having to work too hard. They are uh, eating major bushels. 2,100 bushels, so now we're on that one. About the same on this one. But we've got a gas valve issue. I'm going outside to show you. These gas valves just are, we have our fair share of problems with them. Uh, they get moisture inside, and then the automation, more electronics, corrode, quit working, you name it, but they, uh, they're, they're cheap. And I think uh, they got cheaper over winter. Uh huh. They were fifteen hundred dollars last year, and I'm sure they've gotten a lot cheaper. So it's this here, Dealy Bob. I've got bought more of them than I care to remember. So we're just gonna barely move on that. I'm going for a hundred and sixty degree temperature on the burner. This here arm here is supposed to move which then makes the gas, increases gas or decreases it. And now you, you're never gonna see that, but I was trying to show you the, the flame. So we got the guys called up to fix on that whenever they get out here, but they're busy like everybody. So now I gotta jump in a quad track and go test the Salford out. Bear with the wind. We're gonna run this thing a couple of couple of rounds out in the corn stalks, see what it does. Um, our 5200 is what we usually use in the corn stalks, which you guys remember. But this here, 4200, we're gonna see what it can do. I'm not gonna hold my breath. But don't tell Salford that. I like my 5200. 
Okay, today it's supposed to get awfully windy. I mean like gusts of like uh, 30 and tomorrow maybe even worse. So that'll definitely help dry the corn down because today I believe it's also supposed to be 80 degrees. So actually it'll be like a big furnace just cooking that corn and uh, well, it'll be good to dry it down but oh there's the 5200 but nobody likes trying to put a tarp on a semi in the wind so we'll be maybe trying to find certain fields that we have groves around tree tree claims that we can hide behind and roll the tarp on not good T-post in the snap roller. Duggo. Duggo. Planto over T-post. That's jam. Mm -hmm. We're going to need a torch to cut that out. Mm -hmm. So we can break it off. Alright, Eric's done this at his previous farm he worked for. There it is! Ah, uh, and he bent the gearbox. I'm hoping... Hoping that uh, that ain't the case. But she took some good chunks out of that pole. Never mark your fields with people. Ever. I think it's fine, bro. We'll find out. The, the fear is that this bends the gearbox, but I don't know. I think it will be fine, hopefully. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll know right away if you don't feed. I gotta re-engage the gearbox here. So right here is where the post was in that hole. Right here was the row that Doggo planted it a bit, uh, a bit too close to it, and Brody didn't see it, so we can point the finger at Doggo. Shall we point the finger at Doggo? So I'm pretty pleased with uh, the yield out here. Uh, there was a lot of wet spots, obviously this spring there's a lot of wet spots, but uh, we had to plant around a fair amount, so it was a lot of headlands and messing around after that T-post incident. This is what we call a, we gotta get to the next field and we need an empty cart. Jumping into each other. Oh, well this is disappointing. Took a turn for the worst the day has. We are shutting down because, I don't know, I guess the electrician's at the farm and trying to reprogram some stuff and wire up drag conveyors and hit some button that shut off all the rough augers and now everything downstream or upstream, upstream, uh, is plugged. So, dad needs help and and dump grain so it is what it is well actually it wasn't too bad it was just that leg that uh, was plugged I was informed that a lot of other stuff was plugged but thank God it wasn't or we would have got nothing more done today so we're good to get back in the truck and head back down there well, that's positive it started okay I stopped on the edge of where uh, we we're unable to plant this, I don't know, acre, acre and a half spot because it was just too wet. You can see that I am way too deep with the implement to be out in conditions like this. I would have to take it back out of the ground. So I am, this thing is wanting to go now. It looks like four or five inches deep, which is just, yeah, you would not want to go that deep in regular conditions so got the drags swept way back so they are doing nothing baskets are up we did not use the baskets at all this year because we wanted our soybean stubble to have a little bit of a ridge uh, to it so it dries out better in the springtime uh, here here you go
it's doing something, but ah. Uh, I don't know. I just you have to see it for your own self, but uh, I think I'm going home to get the 5200. Every piece of equipment is designed to do something different. This one, I like it in bean ground. Now we did pick up a couple of rains this year through fall, and uh, this thing definitely turned it a lot darker, blacker ground after the rain. There again, it just was able to bite in better. So if we'd have known on a few of them fields, I think we would have, would have tried to wait for a rain, but you, that's usually a bad thing when you wait because it usually rains too much. Northern Chill just drove by. I can't believe it. Usually there's two, three of them. Just one today. Huh. Here's the hydrating. I'll be darned. Look at here. Drink up, boys. Okay, we just got the 5200 hooked up. It's getting warm. We got the... Uh, oh, that can't be right. Now, well, yeah, 78 degrees so far. But it's still climbing. Look both ways. Okay, we're getting to the field here, right in the corner of uh, the home place. We're gonna have to set the depth. Should be close from last year's stuff, but we'll see. I should be hauling too, but I'll be right back, guys. Just gotta set this thing up. I was on a mission showing you guys how the Salford worked and let's say I got a phone call from an electrician who was at the farm working on a few things to uh, get the site completely finished up and well accidentally shut off the top roof auger yeah I looked both ways um, which then plugged up the spout going up to the top of the grain leg which then started back legging the grain in the grain leg and well it it, it safetyed out everything but i had to call up chet combiners had to come home help me get stuff going now the phone's ringing so one minute i was going to take you out and show you the 5200 because we've been working on that now trying to get it going i'll be back okay off the phone um the blackbirds it's that time of the year where the blackbirds are all herded up in big flocks flying around you got to see it to believe it they can really group up okay we're gonna oh boy that's rough <clears throat> here we go gonna go chase them down This is the same field that I had you out in two years ago, I believe, when we were sitting on it. Um, it's, I don't know, for those of you that know, well, when it's too dry or drier, fall equipment just has a hard time biting into the ground. It wears out if you're using a chisel plow like we used to do, it wears your points out faster. It's hard on the equipment and uh, the coulters have a harder time getting down through the soil especially with the wings we actually had to add they told us to add 300 pounds of weights to the wings we did four don't tell nobody though that's our secret um, otherwise it, it is looking pretty good So as you can tell, it's gotten cloudy. We've been waiting. We knew it was coming. There's supposed to be a big front moving in this evening and gusty winds. 
yeah, 30, 35, maybe, maybe more. You say, oh, that ain't so bad. Well, yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. So once again, I just left uh, the 5200 over there, which we did use last year. Uh, I like that piece of equipment for fall tillage. Here again is the, here is the 50, nope, here is the 4200. I did do a second pass from right here. I don't know if you'll pick that up, but double pass for 36 feet to right about here. So if you can see the difference, right there, 36 feet to over north here. Yeah, that's north, right there. That's double pass, but. 5200 for me for fall tillage on corn 4200 awesome on soybeans it's a keeper gonna be keeping that one so there you got it from our experience do what you want with it but that's what we're that's what we're gonna stick to 52 on corn and I think I'm gonna be done yakking I gotta go check on the dryer site we finally got that all put back together and uh, hopefully, hopefully that's it with the excitement with plugged up stuff for the year. Yes, it is. It's not going to happen anymore. Talk to you later. Oh, there is the last pass of the night and of this field, I think. Pretty cut up out here. So this field was actually hailed on pretty good on the south end of it. So I... I do have hail insurance and we did know about it, which is a good thing. So I probably will get a payment on that. We had to be, to get a payment, hail insurance payment, I had to we harvest had to below um, 192, I believe, and the field went 182. We got problems. The last low of the night and everything goes south. Yeah. What happened? I invited a rider with. Everything breaks when someone comes out. I blew a fuse. <laughs> what are you digging in there for? I'm putting this one back in. I robbed it off of something and I don't know what it does. <laughs> but I need a fuse. Doug was on his way. Well, I think we're back up and going. We replaced the fuse, fixed some wires, blew two more fuses, wiggled on a bunch of wiring harnesses, put a new fuse in and it's working. So that ain't gonna be the last time we hear from it. I have a feeling. Yeah, but all right, I'm out of here. So if they have more trouble, I'm not here. Does that sound like a reasonable explanation? What's going on? A lot of hung up corn somewhere. Oh, back home safe and sound, boys. Look at this guy in his shorts. In shorts and tennis <laughs> shoes. <laughs> That's the way you do it when it's 80 degrees. Tomorrow yeah. you ain't going to be wearing them. No. 56 and 40 mile an hour winds. Should be fun for you loading your splashing straps yeah. in your truck. <laughs> Never good. No. Oh, long day. Shutting it down. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Here we go, Brody.